Chris, let's get into the things we can control to move our mind sh- mindset from quantity of leads to quality of leads. First thing that came to my mind, Chris, is controlling your search terms. And the search terms are tied to the search user's mindset. So doing a better job of getting in front of the best people that are going to be the highest quality of leads and customers for you that are going to actually convert from lead to revenue at the highest rate. Where I'm starting is the search term and um, trying to get on the best searches and thinking through that. So kind of, can you expand on that? Yeah. I mean, there are, on, on this show, you and I both like to use really specific examples and you know, it's, it's always so hard to, um, to, to cover examples in, in, in the volume of all the different industries out there. I mean, there's no way that we can. So Jason, I'll let you sh- share some examples, but I'll start with a rule that I like to, um, uh, begin with, uh, when it comes to, you know, quality, um, in the search at the search term level. Now, this is not always true, but most of the time, if you see a high, high volume of conversions on a search term that is one word or two words, you probably are going to have a problem with quality of leads. Now, if you see a wide distribution of conversions happening on a lot of different terms that are subtly different, but they're all like three, four words long, that is probably an indication that you're dealing with higher quality. That's probably the best way I can explain it. I mean, it seems to be pretty universal. Would you agree? Yeah, it depends if those three, four, five words are correct or incorrect sure. to your sure. uh, business. But I, I like that mindset in terms of, um, I, I definitely like that. And I'll, I'll give you an example. So like if you're a payroll software company and, and you've, you're running a big budget, you know who your kind of clients are. You know who your kind of customers are. If you're specializing in corporations that have at least 100 employees, if you're specializing maybe larger than that in enterprise and you're getting search terms from payroll software searches like payroll software or mm-hmm. payroll software pricing, that could be okay uh, if you're getting leads from that. It could be okay. Some of those leads could be from people working at enterprises and huge companies. And we'll talk about that later on when we talk about what we can't control. And sometimes you just have to show up on these kind of low word count, but general kind of search terms. But at the same time, if you're not trying to get in front of searches like enterprise payroll software or payroll software, 100 employees, 100 plus employees, Mm -hmm. if you're not trying to get those search terms and then seeing how much of your budget you can allocate to those better search terms first, you're probably not doing it right because... What are you have to look at the odds? What are the odds someone doing a search for payroll software and converting and booking a free consultation has an enterprise behind them or 100 employees behind them versus someone searching payroll software, tons of employees, payroll software, 100 plus employees, payroll software for enterprise or enterprise payroll, payroll software. The leads that come from that, those latter searches that are more nuanced probably are going to convert into paying customers at a higher rate. A couple more examples. Say you're a moving company and either you specialize in office moves or the whole reason you've come to Google ads to start advertising is to get more office moves. Maybe that's the kind of moves you want to book the most because they're the highest profit margin or the biggest revenue. If you're getting searches from movers near me versus search terms from office movers and leads from office movers, obviously the latter is going to be better quality for your goal. And then finally, Chris, in the e-commerce space, you can say you're a, a dog bed that specializes um, in making dog beds that dogs won't chew on or dog beds for dogs that have a chewing problem. You could target a search term dog beds and get a lot of conversions. But what about the conversions that you get for the search term dog beds for chewers? Or what if you specialize in making large dog beds and you can get conversions from large dog beds? Um, that's the kind of differences we're looking at. If someone did agree with this theory and wanted to test it out and wanted to get leads, even if they were fewer leads, but leads from their more specific searches uh, because they think they're going to convert into paying customers at a higher rate, 
How would they go about doing that, Chris? Is it a matter of keyword targeting? Is it structure? Is it negative keywords? Yeah. It's kind of tough. Yeah, I mean, that is, that's a great question. And I mean, it's that's, that's a question that requires a, an all-encompassing view because just to say it as precisely as I can, but very short, it, that really requires keywords and bidding and the ad copy, I would say. And I'm going to um, say effort. It, it takes yeah, effort it takes to try time. it out. I mean, it might be an exact match strategy. It might be a more open phrase match strategy, but with very specific negatives that could block out a lot of yeah. stuff you don't want. Negative, it takes yeah. time to try out. Um, do you it, agree with it? Do you think it's worth it for some advertisers to try to narrow in their search terms, even if it's kind of hard to do? If it's so easy to just say dog beds or payroll well, software, do you think it's I mean, worth it? I'll tell you the only people that reach out, well, not the only, but most of the time, the vast majority of people that reach out to me are people that have, you can probably guess it, automated bids with broad keywords. And I see a lot of traffic. I see a lot of quote unquote conversions, but they're having problem with value. They're having problem with closing yeah. and, you know, actual leads and phone calls that aren't producing. That is the, so what it's not is just exactly what you said. The opposite of hard work, laziness. Just throwing a couple keywords into a broad match campaign, crossing your fingers, setting some really low bars on what um, uh, conversion quality is, and then just letting that thing run. And it's also it's also a matter of budget too, because at the end of the episode, we're going to talk about what you can control and some what you cannot control. And sometimes these high volume keywords they they definitely can make sense, and you can definitely get not only leads but customers from them. Uh, and sometimes it's the right strategy, but it's also a matter of budget. And if you have a limited budget, um, which a lot of advertisers do compared to their overall market, a lot of people look at that negatively and they're worried about that. But I kind of look at a limited budget as an opportunity because is... now you can take your limited yeah. budget and just get the absolute top quality, top not only conversion, conversion producing, but conversions that turn into paying customers you can focus on that segment of your audience and just dial it in and get great results. I, 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 ju I just want to, there's, there's people that are jogging right now, walking, driving their car. I want you to stop and rewind that and listen to what he's talking about. Jason's telling you something that if you don't take that seriously, you don't realize the wisdom and what he's saying here. First of all, Jason, you get paid yeah. for people spending more money, right? So it is not in your interest to tell people to have un, un, underfunded budgets. But the, but the secret is that I, I want clients to be happy for the long term. And I want there them to pay me until I'm an old man like you. Mm -hmm. And wrinkly <laughs> and wearing, wrinkly. Sh wearing short sleeve button up shirts <laughs> that I bought just because a name that was not just... spelled like my name, but was sounds like my last name. And I said, oh, it's my last name. I'm going to buy that. That's my this big day. Great... It's a, I love this shirt. Okay. That's a great shirt. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just okay. kidding. I'm kidding. Just, I can't. It's I can't. Coke. It's Diet Coke. It's Diet Coke. Jason's drinking Diet Coke glass. I've got a out of glass. a wine glass. Yeah. I, Sometimes I, I do that. I, I like to class it up with a wine glass, but it is just Diet Coke. <laughs> Relax, everybody. But um, that is where it's, the inspiration. Yeah. It's not as bad as me. You take like, a little sniff nice, of the yeah, Diet Coke. Very, make, aromic. You know, to, yeah. What's the word they use? A Romic? It's That's a word they word. use. It's not a word you use. Yeah, I don't, no. know. I don't, I don't know. But yeah, Chris, but no, um, but, but really, I want people right, to be just... happy for the long term, and the way they're happy is when they make money. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 we can't spend the whole episode on that. I mean, I know we need to move on, but I just yeah. want to point out that is not in our interest. If you are my client or you're Jason's client, it is not in our interest to tell you to under fund your budget to spend less than you think you can but we're telling you a healthier campaign starts with a lack of funding and where you are forced to make decisions on what matters and doesn't matter if i have five hundred dollars and i think i should have a two thousand uh, dollar a month budget i'm going to have to not use the word dog bed or payroll software i'm going to have to make distinctions on the traffic quality that i have and then when you have success build from there. Don't build on trash. 
And you know, Chris, another aspect of it is that um, you think about a company like Amazon. Why does Amazon, why are they able to start a logistics company or whatever they're getting into with drones or whatever and keep growing? It's because at some level they're profitable and they can stay in business and grow and grow. Same thing with Google. Google's profitable. Why may they make maybe billions and billions of dollars one day on driver's list vehicles and put money into that and experimenting on that? It's because they're profitable. So my point is, if you come to the Google ads with the profit mindset and you mm-hmm. dial in your budget on the best quality traffic to start, the beautiful thing is once you've dialed in that traffic with a limited budget, then you can start a second campaign where you open things up and it allows you to experiment and allows you to find the right bidding levels on keywords that produce uh, customers for you at a lower level. But then you can find the right bidding level yeah. and grow and grow. And so... Taking that profit mindset uh, definitely helps.